It'd be a mistake to take the Yoga Vasishta as some kind of philosophical or metaphysical exposition. Rather, it's a riff on reality, a musical riff on reality, and I hope my videos are some kind of counterpoint. It isn't something for us to get our head around. It's an opportunity for us to get around our head. And I mention this because the first paragraph of chapter 50 gives us a list of categories, seven categories, which it's best, it's best to understand as these seven categories could be taken as the scale of the riff. Seven notes, an octave. So let's go with it. Vasishta continued, All these diverse beings seen in the ten directions belong to one or the other of the following categories. Some are in the dream wakeful state. Others are in a notional wakeful state. Some are in a pure wakeful state, others are in a long wakeful state, some are in a gross wakeful state, others are in the state of wakeful dream, yet others are in a decreasing wakeful state. We've had a list like this before, back in section 3, chapter 117, we had a list This relates to the seven stages of wisdom or yoga or seven states of delusion. And also in section 6.1, chapters 120, 126, we have another list of seven. It's basically another way of directing us to spiritual practice, enlightenment practice. In chapter 120, the study of scriptures, company of holy ones, reflection, inquiry, dispassion. This is described as the waking state, or we could call it awakening, I suppose. And then, as you get rid of your tendencies to seek satisfaction in notions of an external world and personality, the, the External world takes on the quality of a dream. We realize that it's dreamlike nature. First of all, we have the waking, and then we have the dream understanding. And then we have the deep sleep, where our focus is on bringing awareness back to itself. And then you have the turiya, the fourth state, as if we're in deep sleep with respect to the belief in the world. And then we have beyond Turiya, beyond the fourth state. So enlightenment, pra enlightenment practice is ongoing. And there comes a point where we no, we no longer try to talk about it. We just get on with it. So what have we got here? We've got these metaphors of the waking, the wakeful and dream states again. Now we could try and reconcile this list with other lists that would be missing the point as i say we want to just go with this and see how it can reinforce our enlightenment practice or am um, in a certain previous world cycle in a certain corner of creation some beings remained in a state of deep sleep though alive the dreams that they dream are what appears as this universe they are in what is known as the dream wakeful state. So this is the first one. We've got this peculiar scenario of a previous world cycle, a universe before this universe came into being. And we've got these people in deep sleep. And what they're dreaming about is us, this universe. So they are in what is known as the dream wakeful state. So their dream state gives us our apparent wakeful state. We are all their dream objects. 
on account of the fact that theirs is a very long dream, it appears to be a real and wakeful state to us. So what do you make of that? How do you feel about being in somebody else's dream? On account of the fact that theirs is a very long dream, it appears to be a real and wakeful state to us. And here's the point. And the dreamers continue to be the jivas in all this. So the jivas are the individual psyches. So it seems to be that we are the jivas that are dreaming. We are the jivas that existed in this previous universe long ago in a state of long dream. And this is us. We exist in a state of dream. And yet we think we're awake because of the length of this dream. We think we're awake and that we're in touch with reality. Because the omnipresent is omniscient consciousness, everything exists everywhere. Therefore we exist as the dream objects of the dreams of those original dreamers. Consciousness is omnipresent, omniscient. Do dreams exist? Do dreams have existence? They certainly do at the time. Although when we wake up from the dream, we downgrade their reality, we downgrade their existence. But at the time, they're maybe even more real than our normal waking experience. So this is consciousness in operation. Consciousness, which we sometimes describe as dream, which we sometimes describe as wakefulness. But we are the dreamers. We've had stories of King Lavana, of the priest Gadi, of the sage Bhrikkhu's son, Shukra. And they all have this experience of living another life or lives in the case of Shukra. They started off in one body and then they experienced a life in another body in another context. Usually, but what happens is they come back to their original body eventually. So they could act, we could say that they were they got involved in some very vivid and long-lasting dreams, although the length of the dream is purely relative. It might have lasted only an hour, but I've gone on for several lifetimes. So this is the... This gives us a feeling for the situation. A feeling for the understanding that what we take, our, that what we take as physical reality is actually dream reality. It's actually dream reality. This has been a theme of the Yoga Vasista, which has been reinforced and pointed out in previous chapters. So this is the dream wakeful state. Let's see if we can go with this and feel what we call physical external reality as a dream. Some people might be more dis predisposed to that than others. But there's all sorts of different angles you can come at it from and appreciate its dream nature. And what is real is here, right here. <laughs>